out in Los Angeles. This is this story. A lot of people haven't heard this story, and it's one of the most bananas stories that I've read. The LA Times posted a whole expose or published a whole expose about it, and I want to read a little bit of this LA Times piece. So it's called, the title of this piece is FBI Misled Judge Who Signed Warrant for Beverly Hills Seizure of $86 Million in Cash. I mean, even just in that, in that short headline, there's a lot packed in. This is what the LA Times writes. The privacy invasion was vast when FBI agents drilled and pried their way into 1,400 safe deposit boxes at the U.S. private vault store in Beverly Hills. They rummaged through personal belongings of a jazz saxophone player, an interior designer, a retired doctor, a flooring contractor, two Century City lawyers, and hundreds of others. Agents took photos and videos of pay stubs, password lists, credit cards, a prenuptial agreement, immigration and vaccination records, bank statements, heirlooms, and a will. Court records show this. In one box, agents found cremated human remains. 18 months later, newly unsealed court documents show that the FBI and U.S. Attorney's Office in Los Angeles got their warrant for that raid by misleading the judge who approved it. They omitted from their warrant request a central part of the FBI's plan. Permanent confiscation of everything inside every box containing at least $5,000 in cash or goods, a senior FBI agent recently testified. Let's pause there for one second. Can you even believe the FBI broke into 1,400 safe deposit boxes with the preconceived intention to keep everything of value. Not everything of value tied to a crime, but just to keep everything after drilling their way into other people's belongings. The, this is what the LA Times writes. The FBI's justification for the dragnet forfeiture was its presumption that hundreds of unknown box holders were all storing assets somehow tied to unknown crimes, court records show. It took five days for scores of agents to fill their evidence bags with the bounty, more than $86 million in cash, and a bonanza of gold, silver, rare coins, gem-studded jewelry, and enough Rolex and Cartier watches to stock a boutique. The U.S. Attorney's Office has tried to block public disclosure of court documents that laid bare the government's deception, but a judge rejected its request to keep them under seal. The failure to disclose the confiscation plan in the warrant request came to light in FBI documents and depositions of agents in a class action lawsuit by box holders who say the raid violated their rights. Yeah, no dip the raid violated their rights. Robert Frommer, a lawyer who represents nearly 400 box holders in the class action case, wrote in court papers the government did not know what was in the boxes, who owned them, or what, if anything, these people had done. That's why the warrant application did not even attempt to argue there was probable cause to seize and forfeit box renters' property. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine taking your valuables and saying, listen, I want to put this in a safe deposit box. I'm going to go rent one. You put it in there. You leave it. You trust this institution to protect it. That's part of of the business transaction. You pay them. They provide the safety and the security. And then the FBI, law enforcement, federal law enforcement, not only snoops in your stuff, drills into your stuff, but takes your stuff without any probable cause. They have no evidence that you're tied to a crime, no evidence that you committed a crime, no evidence that this valuable, these valuables, whether it's jewels or gold or cash, was begot of a crime, which is their only justification for seizing it if it's something that facilitated a crime or was begot of a crime. And they just take it. The LA Times writes, box holders would liken the raid to police barging into a building's 700 apartments and taking every tenant's possessions when they have evidence of wrongdoing by nobody but the landlord. That's the thing. So the FBI was actually investigating the owners of this facility, the owners of this business, not the people who came in and rented the boxes. Yet because they were investigating the owners, they took all of the assets, all of the valuables, all of the cash and the jewels and the will and the cremated human remains, somebody's relative, for safekeeping. They just stole it. The LA Times says to confiscate an asset under U.S. forfeiture laws, the government must first have evidence that it was derived from criminal conduct or used to facilitate it. In the raid's aftermath, the criminal case against U.S. private vaults sputtered to an end with nobody sent to prison. So the FBI stole $86 million in cash from these box holders, and then in the end, they couldn't even get a conviction. Nobody was sent to prison. But the FBI, oh, they're big, fat, richer. The company went out of business, the LA Times writes. It was sentenced to pay a $1.1 million fine for laundering drug money, but prosecutors conceded it lacked the means to pay it, 
Under a plea deal, the U.S. Attorney's Office agreed not to prosecute the company's owners despite a Justice Department policy under Attorney General Merrick Garland to hold individuals accountable for corporate wrongdoing. This, is, this reminds me of a thriller movie, like a law enforcement FBI movie. Except instead of the FBI doing something like this, this is like someone who pulls a heist. The FBI staged a heist. And the only reason that some of the people have gotten some of their things back is because of this class action loss, lawsuit. Now, I, I, I fully acknowledge maybe this, maybe this safe deposit box organization or facility, maybe it was sketchy. I don't know. That's what the FBI claims. I don't trust the FBI, but they, these could be criminals. They could be guilty of money laundering. That's not good. That's what they were suspected of, money laundering. But to drill into all the boxes, not just the owners, you would have to have probable cause or else this is a violation of the Fourth Amendment, which protects individual citizens against unreasonable search and seizure. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Even if one or two or 10 or 20 of these 1,400 boxes were owned by people who had committed crimes. Maybe it was a sketchy place where criminals were known to, to stash their booty. I have no idea. But even if that's the case, they're still protected by due process of law. Even if the FBI thinks it's sketchy and thinks that sketchy people go in and out, they still have to have evidence to give a judge of probable cause why the FBI thinks it's necessary to access this stuff. To prove, to prove the crime that they're investigating. You can't just think, oh, you look sketchy. I think you're sketchy. Your pattern of behavior is sketchy. Therefore, I can steal all your stuff. Imagine if that was how our legal system worked. Imagine if that was our criminal justice system. And yet here it is. They have returned, the FBI has returned some of the stuff, but huge caveat here, the people whom they stole from had to submit an official request on the FBI's website to have their, their belongings returned to them. And the requests, those who submitted the requests, were often subject to audits and investigations. So really, it was just a trick to get people to communicate with the FBI. 